from where we left off in the previous one all right so in this one we are going to start with step 41 here and we'll work our way all the way through to 50. okay so for this one we want to add a submit button to our form with the text send okay so we can either use the input or we can also use a button so we can say uh, have our opening button tag and our closing button tag and then the text we want to give it is to give it a text of send okay so as you can see we have our button here now don't forget to give it a type and the value of the type will be submit okay just to show us the kind of button this is that is a submit button all right moving on we want to add a footer element and an address element so as you can see here uh this is the footer element so that's what we want to add so we'll do footer and within the footer element want to add an address element <coughs> all right <coughs> the next thing we want to do is we want to copy this and we want to add it inside our address okay so let me indent it properly all right there you go so we have our address inside the address element now as you can see this br here stands for break element so that's what is making each one of our text appear on a different line so assuming we take this first break out watch what happens okay you see everything now appears on the same line but when we put the break back it goes to the next line so that's what the break element does <clears throat> okay moving on to step 44 the address element does not have to contain a physical geographical location it can also be used to provide a link to the subject so in this case we want to wrap this free code camp text here we want to make it a link so we use the anchor tag wrap it around like so and then let's give it an href attribute and then the value of this href attribute is going to be this right here okay okay so next up we want to come to our css and continue with our styling so first we want to select the list element within the navigation bar right so we know that the list element let's go back to our html and have a look at something all right so this is our nav bar okay and then over here we use this angle bracket selector to select the ul okay so this selector what it does is it select every element that is a direct uh child of what is here so for example here we are selecting ul every ul that is a direct child of the nav that's why it selects this ul right here so for us to select the list items which in this case is the li what we need to do is to say nav so we go to, we go into the nav when we go into the nav we want to select the ul and inside the ul we want to select the li okay so that's how we do it now let's bring our curly braces and then we'll just copy and paste this here okay let's do away with this now all right now i can expand this so this these links here these are what we are styling now so watch this okay so as you can see uh we change 
the styling because previously there was no padding and margin so you see how it was okay so now we add it back all right okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to deal with the color so as you can see this color really doesn't have a good contrast so we want to give it a color that has a good contrast with the background so one topic of visual accessibility on the topic of visual accessibility contrast between elements is a key factor for example the contrast between the text and the background of a heading should be at least of a ratio of 4.5 to 1 okay so in this case we want to change the font color for all anchor elements within the list within the list element so say li and then bring out it like so then color so what we can do is we can just give it a property of inherit and that will inherit this color right here okay so we say inherit and as you can see the color changes so it inherits the color of its parents right which we have defined right here okay so for step 47 we want to make the navigation buttons look more like typical buttons so we want to remove the underline that is on it so the way we can do that is to say text decoration we use the text decoration property and we give it a value of none all right so that takes off the underline then we want to create a new selector targeting the navigation list element so that when the cursor hovers over them the background color and the text color are switched okay so the way we can do that is to select this is the list item that's what we want to select so we just copy and paste it like so and we bring our colon and we bring hover okay so whatever styles that we add to this for example if i say uh background color red then when i hover over the list items the background color will turn to red let's try it out as you can see okay yeah so we don't need red as the background color so what we want to do is we want to search that when the mouse hovers over them the background color and the text are switched so we need background color and we also need color okay so for the background color we want to switch it with the color of the text so currently is the color of the text so when we over over it we want the color of the text to become the background color and then the background color should rather become the color of the text so we go to our header and then we pick our background color for the header like this and we give it as the color for our text okay also we want to turn the cursor into a pointer all right now when we hover over it see what happens okay the background color becomes uh this whitish color and then the color of the text becomes the same as the background color of the header okay all right tidy up the header by using flexbox to put space between the children okay so um, we'll say we already have display flex here so we'll say justify content and we'll give it a value of space between okay and we want to vertically center them as well so it will say align items and we'll give it a value of center all right then fix the header to the top of the viewport okay so there's the header 
okay and currently when i start scrolling you see the header also scrolls away and it gets lost but that is not the case in the final page for example when you look at here when i start scrolling the header still remains fixed at the top the header doesn't move so the way we can achieve that is to use what we call the position property and we give it a position of fixed okay and we also want to give it a top value of zero now when i scroll as you can see the header continues to remain fixed yes All right, so we have our header fixed, but the problem we have now is that we can see the student info, the headers of student info is lost under the fixed header. So what we can do is to give, <coughs> give it a margin, okay? So give the main a pardon. So first let's select the mean by writing mean like so bring our kelly braces i want to give it a pattern so let's give it something let's say 30 pixels okay as you can see it appears but uh we want to give it let's say 50. yeah 50 looks good and we are just giving it to pardon top okay all right and then finally in this video we on small screens the unordered list in the navigation bar overflows to the right side of the screen so let me see yeah as you can see the navigation bar overflows to the right side so as you can see it's moving away and we don't want that so the way we can do that is to just uh let's have fit this by using flexbox to wrap the ul element so we can see flex wrap and we say wrap okay then set the css property to correctly align the text okay using the following uh css property so i'll just copy it and then let's paste it like so all right all right so now if i scroll and make the screen smaller it does not disappear right as you can see instead of disappearing it sort of wraps onto the next line like so okay all right so we can end here for this one and we'll continue in the next one